it's been a minute hello guys how are you how are you doing how are you feeling we are just gonna do a little sit down a little chitty chat a little catch up with me it's been so long it feels actually kind of weird to be holding a camera right now and like seeing myself in here i didn't even want to get ready for this i'm like no we're gonna we're gonna unpack so i'm not gonna pack on makeup on my face <laughs> but holy Ramoli. It's been a ride. Like, I just. I'm feeling some type of way right now, and maybe it's because Gord's not here. I got. You know, you live with someone, you get used to having someone there, and then you don't, and you feel all types of weird, and you're like, why am I thinking like this? And usually when I'm home alone, I try not to be. I try to go out, I try to do something, but I'm like, you know what? No, like, I can't just run from my loneliness <laughs> i have abandonment issues if you couldn't already tell but i decided to just sit with my feelings and reflect and let it happen even though my mind was trying to tell me to be productive and make all kinds of meal plan dinners and meals and do my laundry and all that stuff i'm like no nope, i'm not doing it i was supposed to do so much today and i didn't do it but you know what that's okay i'm still proud of me because you know what i did today was relax and you need to make time for that if you don't make time for that you're gonna drive yourself insane and the last therapy session i had that was literally what i talked about with my therapist was telling my little inner critic self that tells me every single day you should be doing this you should be doing that to shut up shut the fuck up shut up and just tell it hey i am doing something i'm busy i'm on the couch I'm relaxing, I'm having a jolly old time with my little baby boy here. And it's been nice, it's been nice to have the house to myself, um, even though my instant reaction, or my instant um, knee-jerk reaction is what I wanted to say when I'm home alone is to like be busy and do, <laughs> excuse me, do a lot of things and go out and like clean the damn house like just do the most i'm like no i'm gonna do nothing i'm gonna sit here watch youtube videos and let myself just like veg because i don't do that enough and it's been a time this year it's been a ride it's been i want to open up about that in this video because i feel like i have a lot on my mind and i need to like let it all out let it all out because i've been missing doing youtube because i've been so busy and i don't mean the good kind of busy at all times. Sometimes it was good busy, sometimes it was very, very bad busy. I put up with some sh this year that I wish I didn't. And honestly, I was just put in such an uncomfortable situation. Like, why would you do that? No, but for real, I went like really broke. <laughs> uh, not through any fault of my own, but like sh just happened. And it just seemed like every door was just getting shut closed in my face, like slammed closed in my face. And I was doing everything i could to like try to improve my life try to improve myself try to improve my career and it was just not happening for me for like the longest time and it was like really really hard but like actually like this year I, i'm gonna do like a little bit of ranting venting but like story time if you will because this whole year it deserves a story time it really does like i'm gonna start from the beginning okay so this year started 2021 and we said, ooh, 2020 is over, nobody's going back. It can't get any worse, right? Wrong. In December, I got laid off from my job. Where I live, it was on lockdown and everything was closed down. Everybody was like state of emergency, whatever. So my work was like, I'm laid off, but at least I had a paid leave. However, this paid leave was for a part-time position. So I was struggling a little bit. So I said, okay, I'm gonna take matters into my own hand and work skip. I'm gonna drive around and deliver deliveries, okay? Because I'm about my money and I gotta pay the bills. I mean, pff, hello, it's not a choice. <laughs> so I'm doing that, you know, I'm making my little schmoney, dressing up in my snow pants, snow a tire in a damn blizzard up in here in Canada. I'm driving around, you know, making some money, and then I park at a parking lot to pick up a delivery. Tell me why my car won't start. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why my car won't start. 
pardon me, my car wouldn't freaking start. So I had to get Gord to try to jump my car and like somehow figure out what the hell was going on. I don't even know. I, I blocked it out of my memory. This was like such a awful thing to have happen that I just blocked it out of my memory. I don't even know what we ended up doing. I don't know if we jumped it or if it just turned back on by chance. I don't know what happened, but like we were able to turn my car back on and we drove it back home. Now, I'm like, okay, what was that? What was that? I started noticing my, and the, actually this event made me notice like, you know what? It's probably a good thing this happened because I got to take the car to the shop anyway because like my heat isn't working very well. And you know in the winter here in Canada, you need your heat. You need to be, you need your heat to be working. So I was like, okay, this is probably a good thing. Take the car to the shop. Like my heat's not working. If you know any car stuff, you're already cluing in. But I take my car to the shop and I'm like, yeah, it did this thing where it died on me for no damn reason. She being moody. She being a little extra. She's doing a little much. So I told them that, and I told them that my heat also wasn't working very well in my car. So they're like, okay, we're going to take a look at it. I'm like, all right. And <laughs> it makes me so sad to think about. I literally just had this car for one year. One year. And yeah, nope. It was a write-off. Uh, the engine block was cracked on it. And to replace it would have been to replace the damn car. I mean, it was a 2007, 2006 um, Honda Civic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here I am trying to make myself unbroke and I'm getting broke, broke. Like what? Why? How? What? What did I do? God, why? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be questioning what you do. I know you do everything for a reason, but like, come on. So that was that. I was like, okay. All right, I need a new car that I don't have the money for. <laughs> so the hunt began. I think I like ended up driving Gord's car to work. Or wait, no, I wasn't working. What am I talking about? <laughs> no, I stopped working. Stopped working because I was doing skip. I'm not gonna do deliveries anymore. Maybe that contributed to the car crapping itself out, right? So I'm like, okay, um, I'm gonna, you know, start shopping around for a car and whatnot. See if I can do a little trade in, little tradey trade with my current car that I had, but I wasn't gonna screw someone over. I wasn't gonna like flaunt this, you know, perfect car when I know it, I knew it wasn't perfect. Karma, I believe in karma, and I would have gotten really bad karma, even though I could have made a, like thousands of dollars selling that car. That's bad karma, and that's just like not nice. Who does that? Who sells a car that they know is a write-off to someone? If you, if you do that, oh my God, you're an asshole. <laughs> I knew I couldn't do that. It's not in my character. It's not in my nature. So I was like, okay, I'm going to like trade it in and let them know what's wrong with the car. But like, you know, car dealerships or something or whatever can use the parts for the car. So I'm like, okay, at least they can get something out of this stupid ass, dumb ass, broke ass, janky ass Honda RIP. So the hunt began and I started car shopping. I'm like, okay, let's get a new car, whatever. Long story short, I get a new car. Okay, so I'm like, let's reassess my situation here. I'm on paid leave for a part-time position, and I need more money. I'm not going to go back to skip deliveries because I don't want to crap out this new car. So we're going to we're gonna do a little, a little at-home job fair. So I did. I went on Indeed. I started looking up jobs left, up, right, down, and center. And somehow I ended up on a hiring agency and I thought oh I've been you know hired through an agency before for factory work that was like way too laborsome for me um, but this one seems like you know a right fit they're advertising a job for a I used to work at a cracker factory and this one was gonna be a cookie factory so I'm like solid I know how to do that I can do that um, so I'm like okay applying for the job they're calling me you know they're trying to hook me up with the job and then they say oh wait but we actually have a position here at our hiring agency office if you're interested in interviewing for that. And I'm trying to get some administrative experience here. So I'm like, of course I'm interested. So I go in for an interview. They're super nice. They tell me all about what the job's going to be like. They lost some staff due to, you know, layoffs and travel and 
retirement and whatever their reasons were. And I was like, yeah, I'm totally interested in being like, you know, a little HR moment over here. And they basically told me the job was mine. Now, this was very exciting for me at the time. This was the very first administrative offer I had ever received. I, your girl has never worked, not even a call center job. I've never worked any kind of administrative position. I've worked at a smoothie shop. I've worked at a, you know, Asian buffet. I've worked at, where else have I worked? factories I've done deliveries and I've worked at daycares you guys know that's my field but I've never had like an administrative position so I was very excited I was like this would be a really good step for my career and I said you know I really love where I'm at right now where I was on the paid leave because it was a great company but I think this would be a really good opportunity for me so I notified my current job you know I've been offered a position and I regretfully you know am resigning all of that Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why it ain't nothing but a bullshit. Tell me why the freaking hiring agency says we actually decided to go with another candidate. Like a day after they told me the job was mine. Excuse me. What? What do you mean? I literally just... So here I am begging back for my job at my paid leave, currently closed position. Oh my gosh, it was the most embarrassing thing, but I was like, whatever, I swallow my pride, I swallow my ego, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna be broker than I am. So I'm not gonna like leave this place anyway, just cause I'm embarrassed. So I told them, never mind, I did not get that position. <laughs> for whatever reason, I don't know. And so they pulled that with me. And then I say, okay don't have that job uh excuse me uh, did we all forget that i applied originally to a factory job whatever happened to that i still want that i still need money i still need a job so like help a sister out you know even though i was pissed at what they did i was like can you inform me on the you know other position because i still need money hello hire me so they did they looked into it they at least did that and i was like okay solid so i did i started working at a cookie factory and i learned pretty quickly I, that's one thing a little humble brag here that's one thing about me if i start a job i learn like this like i'm a very quick learner i ask a lot of questions and like the questions that are effective enough for me to gather the information that i need to perform effectively if that makes sense so I learned quickly and I had prior experience so everyone was like I was getting along with everyone there I was doing great they were like oh they're gonna hire you you know permanent in no time which was of interest to me because through a hiring agency they can like let you go whenever they want and I was looking for something more permanent because I didn't know when my paid leave currently closed position that I had would even open so I'm like I want this to last me until the, my other job opens so that's going on i'm making my full time i was working night shift at a cookery factory thriving i'm like oh my gosh thank the lord i was gonna say this is the most money i've ever made but that's not true because i've literally worked two full-time jobs before i don't recommend it but i was making a lot of money compared to like the past two years so i was like solid okay perfect working the factory job getting paid the part-time job so i was like getting like time and a half if you will um and then all of a sudden you know how factories work if you don't know how factories work you have you're in a rotation and you do different positions where like you're either watching the line go or you're putting something onto the line or you're you know whatever so i was in this position that you have to pick up boxes and put them on a skid it's called palletizing so i was doing this and then all of a sudden i go oh, oh my god my back and my back is just in excruciating pain that I can't even explain. Like, I was just... And this was not my posture. Like, I remained... I maintained good posture when palletizing. Like, that's one thing I'm really good at is, like, sitting up in good posture. Squatting with my legs, not with my back. You know, not, like, not lifting with my back. Lifting with the legs. You know how they say in all the training and stuff. But yet my back was like, hell no, girl. And I'm like, okay, oh, okay, I hear you. 
So I'm like, okay, this is bad. I, it literally hurts to bend over. It hurts to stand up. It hurts to sit down. I go to a chiropractor and I'm told that I have a degenerative subluxation, which in other words is my freaking back is looking like this. I don't have the money to pay for a chiropractor, but I also can't afford to be like this and go to work and hurt myself further or like, you know, put my health at risk. So I'm like, okay, this guy's telling me to go to the chiropractor three times a week in order to fix my back. And I'm like, well, I can afford once a week. So let's do that. So I took an amount of three days off of work. That was it. That was all because of an injury that occurred at work. God, I'm getting frustrated all over again. And I'm told that I can't go back. Can't go back. I'm like, you're joking, right? Like that you, I knew the logistics of the factory and they needed people that like they were busy and they were having a staffing issue. So like they needed me, they needed people there. And the staffing agency was like, nope. Um, nope, you can't go back. Um, we've already replaced you and blah, blah, blah. And I literally tried going after these people. Like, I tried going out, like, calling the factory and being like, do you need people? Because I'm being told that, like, you don't. And then the staffing agency was calling me, like, you can't call them. They're our client. Blah, blah, blah. Like, flipping out on me because I caught them in a lie. Like, I'm like, I know you didn't just replace me. They need, like, 30 more people. Like, ooh. Insane. So I'm like, okay, okay. <sighs> All right, so, okay, I go about, I feel like it was about a month without being able to find other employment. I'm applying places, I'm going places, I'm, I'm doing everything I can with a recovering back, a sore back, like I am just in so much emotional and physical pain at this point. I'm like, there can't, there ain't no way this is happening to me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Okay. Let's just roll with the punches. Let's try to stay positive. <laughs> okay. So I find out that there's a new place opening up in my town. I will not name the place. I will not even say the nature of the place. Y'all can use your imagination. So I'm in talks with the person who's hiring for the role. And yeah, it took about, I was in talks with this person throughout the month that I was unemployed. I was like, I'm, I'm really in need. I'm really desperate. Like I will do my best at this job. I have prior experience, et cetera, et cetera. So they say, yeah, we're opening up soon, all of that. And then when they started their training, I actually started my training late because they forgot about me and then I contacted them and then he said he texted me and then he never did Anyways, there was a miscommunication that I like missed the first week of training Because they didn't tell me about it But I started one week after that and I joined the team and we were all training and this place <laughs> Oh my god this place it was insane like I'm talking The bathrooms ain't have no stalls. There was just toilets on floor they were still in their beginning stages so i don't know how they even had us in that building it was probably not legal or something there was probably a safety hazard of some sort but like there was crap everywhere like there was tools there was nails there was paint uh rollers like everywhere basically every day we were like half training half helping these guys freaking open up a place like i didn't sign up for that but okay i didn't sign any paperwork either <laughs> because they didn't know what they were doing so they're still like painting the place they're still like in the building stages like they had the building but they were doing renovations but they weren't done them and they had us in there for that so half the time we're climbing over stuff helping them move stuff around to their basement and like it was a whole mess and we would walk in there every day mind you we were working like 12 hour shifts it was insane but i'm like hey this is i want money this is good money so i put up with it and um every red flag i just ignored 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 because i'm like i need money so yeah they're putting up different you know decorations they're painting the place they're figuring out the freaking washroom situation and they open they do a soft open they call it and i, I don't i don't even know what to say <laughs> Like, this place was insane. I, you know, started doing my job, 
with doing it well and I'm being told I'm doing well, you know, I'm like helping them out. I even helped them like print stuff because they couldn't figure that out. Like it was a whole chaotic moment. Um, but I was there for two weeks until one day I went in for my shift. And at this point, my other job had already opened. So the one I was on paid leave for, for part time, it opened back up. I started that up. So I was working four hours in the morning and then going home, getting ready, going straight to my other job and working till 2 a.m. Don't ask me how I did that and don't do it either. But <laughs> I was broke. I was, you know, doing what I had to do. So I'm doing that. And one day I show up to work and the person who hired me just says, oh, like, can we talk for a second? And I said, okay. And they said, um, it's not going to work out. But I thought you, but you said I was doing a good job. And then I've been here for two weeks and a bunch of girls quit and You don't, you don't need me. You hired me, but you... What? I am very confundida. I am very confused. And I asked for feedback. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Like, what was... What, what happened? Like, I had no idea. This is, took me totally by surprise. And they said, oh, yeah, no. It, it, was, it was the sales. And I would like you to work at my other location better. And I'm like, right... Trying to process this, and I'm like, okay, all right, okay. At this point, I'm like, what else could happen? What else? What else could happen? <laughs> oh boy, there was more in store. I think the the worst thing that happened happened right after this one, and it was basically the fact that I had applied for my position that I had part time during the day, full time. My full-time position that I had been dreaming of. I've been working part-time. I had been working part-time or slash laid off for almost a year in this position. And I applied for that same position full-time. I was very confident that I had it. I had an hour-long interview where it was just scenario questions. And I did my best. I was confident. And I got totally, totally, totally rejected. I got shut down and I was freaking devastated because this isn't just a job I'm trying to get for money like all these other places this is my career like this is my actual like what I went to school for like <laughs> hello let's go I've been in this field for nine years and something has got to give I thought and nothing nothing like I just and the worst part, and this was bittersweet, I look back at this now and I'm thankful for it, but then it was so painful to sit through an hour-long follow-up to the interview that I had telling me why I didn't get the job. Even though the explanation was literally just a description of my role, which is... Like, I knew what my responsibilities were I knew what I was doing it and I knew I was doing it well but they I don't know they had their reasons and they explained to me what they were looking for and all of that I jotted my notes down of like what they were looking for because I'm like I'm not gonna give up like it's this is my dream job but I was just devastated I can't even explain to you how upset I was about this like I had some really dark days where I was like why am I here what is my purpose like I don't want to wake up it got really really dark like after everything I've just told you can you just imagine how I must have been feeling where my mindset was at like I was not doing well girl <laughs> I wasn't I was just so sad I was so upset I cried I cried and cried from devastation of like my god <laughs> what else could happen this year like what else is this year gonna throw my way it was just unbelievable to me like how many things had just been happening like that that had been turning out just so sour and so wrong i just i had no words i i this is where it gets a little fuzzy for me even though it was the more recent events i can't remember in what order this happened but basically what happened next was when things kind of started looking up but kind of me putting up with some stuff also for the purpose of money which Honestly, looking back on this, I wish I wouldn't have. I really wish I would have just skipped this whole experience, even though I would be hundreds and hundreds of dollars 
poorer. My mental state I don't think was prioritized and it was just for the purpose of money because I was so stressed out about money that I just need money and I put up with like you know a toxic workplace just to like make ends meet and that's like a really sad thing to think about because like people all over the world probably do this without a choice and I had a choice and I chose I didn't choose myself I chose you know money and wealth financial health rather than mental health and I suffered because of it and I don't, I'm not gonna say I deserved it because no one deserves that but I feel like I ignored a lot of red flags and I recommend that no one does that like if you are working somewhere and it's just like not it like don't it's not worth it it's not worth the money things could go so wrong something so like you could get hurt something could go really 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 wrong and you would you might regret it for the rest of your life like I feel like I got lucky in this aspect but again did I learn from the first experience no because the person came back oh my gosh click just got this couch so freaking dirty also can I just mention I just took Clark outside and it it's nighttime and I never do that that's how like off I'm feeling today <laughs> So if this video is really long, it's because I, I there's a lot on my mind that I even went outside in the dark. Like, I don't do that ever. That was like the one thing I couldn't like not do today. <laughs> Out of all the things I didn't want to do, I was like, I gotta take care of my son. But um, where was I? So basically this person came, comes back and tells me, so um, are you ready to start at my other location? And I'm like, you were serious? <laughs> like I thought that that was just... A comment that was made like out of pity because they were letting me go but I was like I I do need money <laughs> I do need money to recover from just getting a part-time wage especially because I had come to know that my car that I got I just have let me just say I have the worst car look ever I freaking hate cars now like next car I get is gonna be like brand spanking new warranty like up the butt because like um, I'm done with car stuff. But anyways, the new car that I got, love, love her. She's amazing. Amazing car. However, the person who owned the car before me lowered it. This is what my car guy said. My car is lowered. So, like, I can't even clear a freaking, like, shoe on the road. And I'm saying shoe because I've literally <laughs> driven over a shoe. And my, it just goes, bonk, 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 bonk. Like, it just, like, hits the bottom of my car because my car is so low. Drop it down low to the boat. Anyways, so I have to lift my car. If you know anything about lifting cars, it's not cheap. I, especially because I don't have the coils to lift it. And a big, big, big <laughs> car bill was coming. So I'm like, yes, I, yes, I am ready to start at your other location. <laughs> The things I'll do for money. Oh my god. So yeah, I accepted the job and before right before or right after that I also applied for a new position in my field. That was not the position I wanted. However, it sounded like a great opportunity and it did have my current position as the role as well as administrative support, which I, I was really excited about. Um, that's the direction I'm trying to take in my career is moving on up in the world because I've been doing it for so many years that I like I want to grow I want to learn I want to become more than what I've been and what I am and I thought well you know what after being so devastated about the last job I didn't get there is something to be said about the kindness of them having that follow-up call with me for an hour <laughs> while I tried not to cry um, because they set me up for to be in a really good spot to know exactly what employers look are looking for for positions like this so with all my notes that i wrote down and all the things that i had to focus on and work on and i say like this not because i'm like in denial of something that's like that i'm missing because i know i have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge but i think there might be a little disconnect with um the amount of how do i put this Every person in authority in like basically every job I've had has been white. So there's something to be said about that. But I'm just going to leave that there and let you marinate with that. So there's that and there's also just nepotism. The practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. 
So there was an element of that I ended up finding out, but they were very kind to me because they freaking honestly had to be. Um, because I was, I had that role. I had that role in a part-time capacity, so why couldn't I have it in a full-time capacity? So they still set me up for success for my future by letting me know the things that they were looking for or employers look for with this role, which set me up for success for this next interview that I thankfully, for the love of God, thank you. God had something more in store for me and I did get this new position, better position in my field and I was so, so grateful. I was so relieved and I was so like, it almost was hard for me to enjoy it and celebrate it. This like amazing opportunity because I was so traumatized from everything I had just been through. I'm like, finally, like I was relieved more than happy. I was just like exhausted from everything I had just gone through in order to get to where I am now. And this just meant everything, like everything. Now like, I'm like, okay, we're good. And I haven't even touched on my business challenges because there have been some. Um, but I feel like I need to do like a whole series on that But I've had that on the side to kind of tide me over as well, which is good But I've finally come to a spot that I've been dying to be at in my career and I'm like, okay Thank the Lord Almighty finally after like most of the year being just Plane crash that leads us to today basically I mean minus the fact that I went to that other location that I got hired for by the same Person. Let, let, let's recap from the last time they let me go. <laughs> you know where this is going. The last time they let me go, they said it was my sales. But my service was excellent. Correct? Right? You with me? Okay, you're following. This time, I was there for two to three months, not even three months, and they would barely schedule me. They would schedule me like once or twice a week, which I was like, okay, that's perfect because like I have a full-time job now, but I just need this extra money for this big car bill that I know is coming up. And so one day they call me in for a meeting, and I thought, oh, like it's a staff meeting. Bitch, no, it's a me and them meeting. <laughs> and I look at them and I'm like, are you doing this again? And they're like, <sighs> I'm like, oh my God, why would you hire me? I straight up said this verbatim. I was like, why would you do this? Why would you hire me? What happened? Like what went wrong? <laughs> Cause at this point I'm like questioning what is wrong with me? Even though I know there wasn't anything wrong with me, that's how toxic workplaces make you feel. Like you feel like you're doing something wrong. Even though this workplace, it wasn't bad as the new one, but this one was like, they had nothing in place that any workplace is supposed to have, like, or every workplace should have, they didn't have. Like, when it came to workplace health and safety, and just like proper paperwork, and it was just so unprofessional and so not okay, that either way I wasn't gonna be at this place long after I got the money that I needed to get for this big car bill, but I was like, why I feel used and literally that's 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 all jobs are at the end of the day you just they just use you but anyways yeah they they let me go from that job also and they said oh it was you did so great at sales it was just the service and I'm like y'all don't even keep up with your own damn lies like do you really believe that no like I I had no complaints and they were trying to tell me that I had complaints I was like I know that I did such a good job and I was told that every day, every time I showed up to work, like, I, no, 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 you're not, you're not going to lie to me. And the matter of fact was that they were short of work because like they really were, <laughs> they were really slow. Like the business was not, not going well for them. And it's like, is your ego really that big that you can't just say we'd have no work for you? You have to go and make someone feel bad about themselves or bad about the, their work ethic because like you just want to do what's best for you like that's that is so wrong uh-uh like no don't don't do that don't do it don't it's not worth it i feel like there's so much more productive and effective ways to let someone go than like lie about the reasons you're letting them go you know what i mean my battery's dying but anyways i say all of this to say that i've had a rough year but i'm still here i've made it through and if I can make it through, so can you. I hope this inspires you. And if you had a rough year too, same here. 
but things don't last forever good or bad like nothing lasts forever my back is better I got a good job I'm happy like even though I had some dark days this year like I'm grateful for everything that happened because it's made me that much stronger even though it freaking sucked and at the end of the day I did make the money I needed to make for my car bill so I'm really proud of myself I would usually put that on a fat credit card bill but I'm like no I'm gonna save up all this money and I did so that's coming up real soon and it's gonna be really satisfying to just pay it cash but yeah we had to chat I had to catch up and let you guys know and fill you guys in on what was going on because I was not doing well but we're gonna get back into YouTube I'm gonna see you guys very very soon I'm gonna get back into the rhythm fill you guys in on more stuff very very soon but I'm gonna cut this short short this is not gonna be a short video but shorter than I was intending because my uh, battery's dying and I love you guys thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up it really helps me out and I will see you guys next time wait no I forgot one thing oh my god this has been so long subscribe if you haven't already because it's free <laughs> I miss saying that and I will see you guys next time